What's up, y'all? It's your girl saying, and today we are going to be reacting to a video from a channel called Will One Two Three Will, and it's titled "Who Is This Man?" Now, to be real with you, oh, y'all didn't see that. Y'all didn't see that happen. I meant to do this. <laughs> Apparently, this video is supposed to be about the Antichrist, so let's get into it and see what he's talking about. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we will be discussing the similarities between the Islamic Savior, who they call the Mahdi, and the Christian Antichrist. Now, hopefully the information that you're about to hear will shock you, as it did me. So, let's get right into it. We know that both religions have prophetic viewpoints. They both have eschatological views. This means they both have their different views and theories on what's going to happen in the future. And just to make things clear, I believe that the Holy Bible is 100% true and it is inspired mm -hmm. straight from God. And the Thanks. only reason I'm even talking about the Islamic Savior, the Mahdi, is because I think the Mahdi is directly correlated to the book of Revelation. And let me explain. The Mahdi in Islamic eschatology is a messianic deliverer who will fill earth with justice and equity. He will restore true religion and usher in a short golden age lasting seven, eight, or nine years before the end of the world. I think that seven year mark is kind of interesting. But anyway, the Mahdi, also known as the rightly guided one, is the name given to the restorer of religion and justice who according to a widely held Muslim belief will rule before the end of the world. Now, according to Muslim tradition, the following things I'm about to tell you are true. Number one, Muhammad said the Mahdi would bear his name and rule all Arabs. Tradition states that the Mahdi will descend from the family of Muhammad and will hear Muhammad's name. Number two, he will be the ruler of all Muslims. Number three, he will rule the entire world and everyone will become Muslim. The Mahdi is said to lead a world revolution that will establish a new Islamic world order throughout the entire earth. Number four, it says that he will be loved by all due to his miraculous powers. Now keep that one in mind. It is said that the Mahdi will have control over the wind and the rain and the crops. Under the Mahdi's rule, the world will live in prosperity. And lastly, number five, the Mahdi will be riding on a white horse. Now, from hopefully you guys are already picking up on some of these signs, but if you haven't already, just stick along. Now that I've told you things about the Mahdi, let me tell you some things about the Antichrist, the true Christian Antichrist. He will exalt himself as God or above God. He will heed his inner voice above others. He will be hostile towards the true God. He will exalt human logic above faith. So in my mind, that means he's going to be a man of science. He will prosper for a season and be loved. He will not desire women. He will not follow the faith of his fathers. He will viciously persecute Jews and Christians. Hmm. He will think of himself as greater than God. He will become increasingly lawless. He will honor military power above faith. He will love wealth. He will hoard precious things. He will become a man of war. He will wage war on all people of all faith. He will force Israel to ratify a treaty. He will divide Israel and Jerusalem. He will invade Jerusalem. He will enter the restored temple and he will declare himself above God. Now, the most interesting part of the video comes. Now, we know, what did he just tell us? What did he just tell us about the, the Muslim guy that's supposed to come back and save everything? He sounds just like our Antichrist. That's wild. That is wild. The comparison between the Mahdi and the Antichrist. But before I compare, let me, let me just get this one thing straight. Islam claims that they believe in Jesus as Christians believe in Jesus. No, they do not. It is not the same Jesus. They call their Jesus Issa, and their Jesus is not the Messiah. Their Jesus does not have this savior complex, okay? Our Jesus or the Christian Jesus does. They are not the same Jesus. They cannot be the same person and same entity if they both have two different lives and completely different um, goals for their existence. So they're not the same Jesus. Just don't let that get in your head. But similarity number one, okay. he will rule the whole world and all will love him. The second similarity, they will both love military power. Now, if you go back to the first part of the Mahdi, um, it says that the whole world will be you know, forced to become Islam 
or forced to follow Islam. Which makes sense based on what he said earlier, when he said the Antichrist from the Christian version is going to persecute all Jews and Christians. So we all getting persecuted. The next big religion is Islam. It's not Hindu, it's not Buddhist, it's not none of that. The next big one is Islam. So it makes sense that they would try to push that on. Ooh. How are you He's going to force people to do that without the power of the military? Number three, we know that they will both perform miracles. According to Islamic tradition, the Mahdi will perform signs such as ordering the winds, waters, and crops. And we know that the future Antichrist will be performing wonders on the earth that could possibly even deceive God's elect. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.9 says, The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. If an Islamic man came from out of nowhere and starts performing all of these miracles, it's going to make me think about it a little bit. Now, mm -hmm. my faith is not going to waver from believing in Jesus Christ, but I am going to have my eyes on the sky and be like, how is he doing this? From what powers does this come? But obviously it's from the demonic realm because it cannot be of the one true God, Jesus. Facts. Facts. I ever see some stuff like that, I promise you. I'm, I'm, you get in the side eye all day. You are getting the side eye and be like, nah, something wrong with you, bro. <laughs> something wrong with you. There's actually one person in my life. <laughs> I'm not going to say who. There's somebody in my life where they always pick, like, they always pick the wrong decision and they pick sin. They always pick evil. And I'm not talking about regular sin and, and none of that. That's a wild statement to make. But I'm trying to make y'all understand without pinpointing who I'm talking about in my video because my friends and family to watch my videos. But... When it comes down to it, it's like, this is the truth, this is the light, and then this is darkness. They always pick dark. I swear on everything. The day this happens, and we watching the news or something together, it's like, hey, did you see this? And I, I show them the video, and they be like, oh, that's dope. And then they start, all my friends are, are uh, atheist or agnostic. Yeah, I, swear, I swear on everything. If they start following that. I'ma know that's the Antichrist. I'ma know it is. And I'm gonna be like, nah, you gotta get away from me. You evil too. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, let me pray for you to try to save you or something. Cause <laughs> that's how I'ma know. That's gonna be my marker. That's how I'm 100% uh, gonna know. No more side eyes. <laughs> now, those were all of the main similarities, but here is the main difference. And this is the part that completely blew me away. The Mahdi and the Antichrist do not ride the same horse as it appears in the book of Revelation. Oh, okay. If you remember, the Mahdi, Islam's savior, will be riding a white horse. So the real question is, who rides the white horse in the book of Revelation? Well, Revelation 19.11 tells us that our savior, the true savior, Jesus Christ, rides the white horse. Don't believe oh, okay. me? Listen to this. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but he himself. He is clothed in a robe, dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread on the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So you're telling me the Islamic Savior is riding the exact same colored horse in their end time prophecy as our Savior? You're telling me there's no correlation there? Again, this is not a coincidence that they both ride the same horse. This is Satan's direct attempt to blaspheme Jesus. I believe that Satan is the one who revealed himself to Muhammad and his followers. We know that Satan understands the scriptures very well. This is, is why true. he is perverting them. He always provides half-truth with half-lies to deceive the people. Do you really think this is a coincidence? There's no way. There's no way this is a coincidence. Islam, Judaism, and Christianity are three different religions. They are not the same. It doesn't matter how many similarities there are. 
if Jesus is not the Savior and the Messiah, it is wrong. Now you're going to say, oh, Will, you're so close-minded. Okay, so be it. If he He's supposed to be. Look, I can't fault him. If you, whatever you believe, you're supposed to think you're right. He's obviously Christian. I'm Christian. We think we are correct in what we're thinking. Just like if you're watching this and you Jewish or Islam or Buddhist or whatever, you won't think you're correct. That's just how that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and be like, yes, I believe I'm correct, but I also think you're correct and we can be correct together. That don't even make any sense. That don't make no sense. One of us is right and we're going to see whenever end times pops off. I think I'm closed minded for thinking that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, then literally so be it. In conclusion, I believe that the Christian Antichrist will be Islam's savior. Now, I could be wrong. I could be 100% wrong, but that is what I currently believe in right now. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please. All right. So, my my views on it, right? My views on it. I think he put up a good argument. At the end of the day, none of us are really going to know. When things just start popping off and happening, we just going to have to refer to our Bibles and make judgment calls from there because we don't actually know a date, a time. We don't know any of that, so we have no idea. His argument for connecting the two, it do make sense. It's plausible. I'll give you that. It is plausible. But what do you guys think? Do you think he is correct? Do you think it's plausible? Do you think it's somebody else? Because there's another video on YouTube as well that thinks somebody else is doing it. There's a guy in Jerusalem right now performing miracles. So a lot of people think it's him as well. Let's see, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you never saw I drop a video. And until next time, you already know who it is. It's Sang. Yeah,